In this video, we're going to introduce the notion of how to find the area between two graphs using calculus. I'm going to briefly explain why it actually works. So we'll start by letting f and g be continuous functions. So let f, g be continuous on, say, the closed interval a comma b. And further suppose that uh, we have that g is less than or equal to f. So g of x is less than or equal to f of x for all x in our closed interval a, b. Then it turns out that if you integrate from a to b and you look at f of x minus g of x and you integrate this with respect to x, this is the area bounded by the graphs of f, by the graphs, it's good to write it all down, really think about it, of f, g, and, put another comma here, the vertical lines, I'll give you a picture in a moment, the lines would be x equals a, and x equals b. So let's draw a picture so uh, we can explain what this actually is and then we'll briefly talk about um, why it works and then we'll do an example. We'll do an example of, of how to actually uh, use this. So here's the picture. So pick. So let me just come down a little bit further here. Let's go ahead and draw the y-axis. I'll draw it here. So there's the, there's the y-axis. And then here is the x-axis right here. All right, and let's just say that this is the graph of f here. So this is f of x. And we know g is smaller than f, so let's just say that this here is your, your g of x right here. And I'm putting them uh, in quadrant one just for convenience, just to make it you know, easy to draw. They could be anywhere, right? These two graphs could be anywhere. As long as g is smaller than f, life is good. Let me switch colors here. So this will be maybe a here, and this will be b here. This is actually the vertical line, x equals a, so you could think of a line here. So the vertical line, x equals a, and you could think of this as a line, uh, x equals b. You could think of the line there, x equals b. So we're finding the area of this, this region here. I'll use a, a light blue. So we're looking for the area of this shaded region, this area bounded by these graphs. So the idea is uh, that you pick, uh, you, draw, you, you divide the interval uh, into subintervals. And so you pick some, some xi in some subinterval, and what you do then is you draw a rectangle. This is just a very rough explanation, so this is our rectangle. Just pick an arbitrary rectangle. And uh, the height here would be f of xi, and the height here would be g of xi. So what we want to do is we want to find the length of the rectangle. We want to find this distance here. So this distance here, it's going to be top minus bottom. It would be f of xi minus g of xi. So uh, this big distance here is f of xi. This little distance here is g of xi. So top minus bottom. So f of xi minus g of xi. This is the, this is the height of the rectangle. Let's call it the length. It's called the length of the rectangle, but it is the height. 
It is the height. So it's top minus bottom, top minus bottom. Just as a side note, you could do this horizontally with functions of y. And in that case, it would be right minus left. So we'll come back to that later in the examples. But whenever it's functions of x, it's top minus bottom. Functions of y, right minus left. So here we have functions of x, so top minus bottom. And then you can think of the width of the rectangle as delta x. So what you would do is you would say that the area of the ith rectangle would be f of xi minus g of xi times some delta x. And uh, this is really delta x sub i, right? Because the rectangles can have different, um, they can have different length, different widths, right? You can have skinny rectangles and you can have big fat rectangles. So the idea is you approximate the area. So the area is approximately equal to the sum of the areas of a bunch of rectangles. So it would be f of xi minus g of x sub i times delta x sub i. So this might be an over approximation, it might be an under approximation, but we know for sure it's probably not going to be correct. So what we do is we take the limit, so that, that produces infinitely many rectangles. So if we let take the limit, and the way we take the limit is a little bit, um, let me show you, let me just go ahead and show you. So you say, what is this delta? Let me go ahead and, and do this like the right way. A little more rigorous here. So this right here is is the length of the largest subinterval. Okay, it's the length of the largest subinterval. So it's the width of the largest rectangle, and we're saying that the width of the largest rectangle is going to zero. So if the width of the largest rectangle goes to zero, that means the width of all the rectangles go to zero. That means that you have infinitely many rectangles. So you basically, what we often do. In, in Calc 1, what you would do is you wouldn't use delta x sub i in the problems. You would use delta x. So you could replace this limit with this one. And you just think of it as being infinitely many rectangles, and you have delta x. And what you would do is you would set delta x equal to b minus a over n, so that all your rectangles had equal width. And so that when this goes to 0, n goes to infinity. So you can make this, this substitution. So it's a common thing. If you look in the calculus book, some books will have this, and, and some books will have this. This is easier to work with. So I usually just go over this and just omit this. Anyways, you take the limit, and you have the sum of inf infinitely many rectangles, and that gives you the definite integral from a to b of f of x minus g of x dx. So this is, this is actually equal to the area. So it's no longer an approximation. It's actually the area formula which we talked about.